Hey guys, Jessica Henry here. I wanted to welcome you back to my studio today. I have a project here that I'm working on that I think that you might find kind of interesting. This is a, a, a obviously a larger painting that I started earlier this week and I wanted to do something incorporating my different plein air studies. I went out to a workshop last fall to <clears throat> study under Frank Serrano for a week and it was fabulous. We were in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California and I did a few of these studies and I've been wanting to put this together in a bigger painting for a while. So I will show you, these are four of the studies that I'm using from that trip. This first one is uh, Mount, um, I think it's Mount Howard, Howard Mountain. I'll have to double check on that. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is the mountain and we are, I, I did the study. I hadn't really painted plein air mountains before, so it was really exciting to be out there. But I really wanted to capture the shadow colors and the highlight colors. It isn't, when you do plein air studies, it's not about capturing um, a fabulous, gorgeous painting, but it's more about capturing uh, mass and form, um, the color notes, so that when you go back to your studio, you can um, use the photographs that you took and then your plein air studies, and that's what I want to demonstrate on here today. So that was the mountain one, and I'm going to set this up here because I'll show you how I used this study to get it to this point. And then um, I'm gonna be working a little bit on these poplar trees. And this was the uh, plein air study that I did while out there. And I like this because the color notes in here and some of this at atmosphere that you can see back in here did not get captured in the photograph. I will show you by comparison, okay? This is the photo, some of the photographs that I took of this beautiful poplar forest. Can you see those? Okay, they're all right, nice photos. But if I hadn't done this color study, it would have, I would not have caught some of those beautiful greens and um, the atmosphere. Look at the color on the tree trunks too. Okay, on the photograph here, they're like black and white. On the this one here, I have purples and there's a lighter, more atmospheric color in here and there's movement of light on the tree trunks. So I'm really glad to have these studies. So I'm gonna be working on that and I'll kind of leave it in this area while I'm doing that. Um, oh, this is the photograph that I used for reference in this mountain. This was the one I used for color studies. And this was, I zoomed in way up there. This is the mountain right here that I focused on for all the little detailing things in this. Okay, so that is for that one. And then, um, down below here, I knew that I wanted this cowboy to be riding in um, this pastoral scene with this rocky creek, and it was actually called Rock Creek up there in the mountains. And so I had done a plein air study of Rock Creek, so named because of the rocks. <laughs> so I am doing the same kind of study here, uh, just in here, and I don't actually have a photograph of this scene from when I was painting this, but I don't really care because I really like how this planner turned out. And if I can capture this on here just like that, then I'll be really happy. So I'm gonna leave that right there while I work on that, move this over. And then this passage in here, I, I really liked on, on this study that I did out in the mountains and how some of these trees just have this this beautiful intermingling of aspen colors and the darker um, pine trees and stuff so I'm gonna leave that right here and then um, I love a painting that tells a story so this painting has uh, this guy on his horse and he's got a little calf slung over his saddle like he just went and um, you know rescued the wandering little baby but they're looking at, over here, there's a grizzly bear just waking up. And so he's waking up and they're about to hightail it out of there. So I have, when I was at the Central Park Zoo here in New York, I got a picture of the grizzly, a grizzly bear just waking up. Look at him yawning. I think that's awesome. So he's waking up and I'm gonna capture that right there. I might do him yawning, I might not. I, don't, I haven't decided fully about that. And then this is my friend and he's riding a horse. So you can see it right here, I don't have to move that. Caught him on the horse, love this angle. And um, I obviously I changed his shirt. And then this picture I found, you can see it right here. There's a little bit, there's a calf um, slung over the guy's saddle. So I'm gonna use that right here. All right, 
that's enough talking. So I'm gonna get in. I have my palette right here. This is the palette that I actually make these. If you go to my website, you'll see how to order these. They're pretty cool, lightweight, and they have this really neat balance. Um, so anyway, enough of that promotion. <laughs> I have my colors that I just normally use. This is Titanium White, Cad Yellow Pale, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Phthalo Green, um, Alizarin Crimson, and then I did throw on a little bit of Cadmium Red Light because I'll mix a little bit of that to get with the yellow to get some of these warmer tones of those trees in there. And I just want to tell you, in case you hear construction, we have construction going on right outside. Um, they're working on the deck, so if you hear some banging and sawing, that's what's going on. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to jump in. I'm not going to obviously finish this painting today, but I wanted to show you how I will take... Mm, let's work on the creek. I'll take this study here and um, move the stuff out of the way and just work on this passage using this. Let's see, you can't see it from over there. I'll do it this way, using that little color sketch. So let's see what happens. I'm using uh, my paper towels. Um, oh, when I work on something this complicated where I'm using all these different elements and stuff, I will always begin with the sketch. I forgot to show you that. This is my thumbnail sketch. This kind of, it gave me an idea of where I want to go with this and just um, notes for myself and, um, you know, ideas and thoughts. There's a lot of planning that goes into one of these where you're taking all these different elements. And my focus is always to keep the lighting exactly the same and consistent. It's coming from this way and gonna hit in here. So like uh, my rider here, the light is hitting him from the front. So on my rider over here, I had to make the light hitting him from the back because it wouldn't have made sense to have the light coming from this way. So, all right, grabbing uh, a brush. I'm gonna use, um, oh, this one's fine. This is, no, I don't like this one. <laughs> okay, so in this passage in here, I think I will tackle the area here closest to the rider on the horse, working my way down the creek. And I'm gonna use some of these colors that I have in here because I think that they've just worked really well. For chemicals that I have out here today, I have my linseed oil and my Gamsol. And I'm gonna hold my palette up like this and try to show you what I'm working on as I can without blocking too much. Okay, so the horse, right here I'm seeing this, I think that this green would look really lovely in there. So I'm taking some yellow ochre and cadmium yellow. And let's just start jumping in with some of that mixture there. I'm gonna just lay that down. I guess I will put, I'll be cognizant and aware of his reflection because he's gonna have a little bit of reflection in that water. So for now, I'm gonna add some of that green up in here so it makes sense. You'll see I jump around a lot, but I do that because there needs to be that sense of unity. So if I have green down here, then it would stand a reason that it should be up here just a little. And I think I've mentioned it before, whatever the reflections are doing in the water, the, down here they're gonna be a little bit darker than what they are in real life. So I might add a little bit more ultramarine blue to this. I'm plopping that in, about like that. And I think I will add a little bit of yellow that would be showing up from the trees down here in the water. I have a little bit of that in my study here. It's kind of hard to, it kind of blends right in. It's like camouflage. <laughs> anyway. You get the idea. So as I was laying out the idea for this painting, I was thinking about um, telling a story. And I knew that I wanted the characters of this painting to be all looking off this way and um, trying to incorporate, you know, an overall decent composition in the course of that too. Uh, so I wanted the creek here to lead the eye in thought that that would be a really pretty entry into this, and I knew I had this study. All I'm doing here is just plopping in some cadmium yellow. It might be a little bit hard to see. I hope it's not too hard. When, I, when you paint water, you always want to think about what's happening under the surface of something, and that's what I was thinking about over here. Um, I'll show you this again up close. I focused on the color that was that I saw under the top layer of water, and then I glazed highlights over the top. And so that's what I'm kind of working on here. As I'm thinking about the water as it's coming around him here, 
the color that would be underneath. A lot of water has a lot more of the yellow ochre, ultramarine blue sort of mixture, burnt sienna. So grabbing that, putting it in. And also keeping my brushwork really horizontal and calm and peaceful. Okay, like that. Looking at that, and I've, I've got some really nice dark, dark, dark spots in here, so I'm gonna make sure that I get those in here too. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, using a little bit of linseed oil because I want that a little bit thinner, just so I can work it a little better. Um, okay. So I have this in here. I'm gonna lay down this nice dark passage. And it also, by putting these darks in place, it helps to define a little bit more of the passage and the composition in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's looking good. I'm also using it over here to kind of stair step the viewer through the painting. Let's get a little more blue in there. It, it'll help to define these rocks in here too. I love taking these plein air studies. We have so many of them, um, you know. I, I it, The more you do, you've got them all sitting around. It's kind of fun every now and then, especially, you know, if the weather's bad and you can't get out and go outside and paint, um, to do something with them and, and grab a few of them that maybe the lighting is kind of similar and um, see if you can arrange them in a way or arrange the subject matter in a way that would create an interesting and harmonious painting. It's kind of fun. You play with it, do some sketches. Definitely got to do some thumbnail sketches to see where you're going with different ideas. Is that even showing up? Okay, good. Uh, again, I, you know, I'm just laying in some of these darks. In my sketch over here, my thumbnail sketch, I did, I was thinking about these passages in here where I wanted um, the darker values, so keeping those in my mind. <laughs> and again, looking at this, I've got some of those really pretty ochre, um, sort of sienna combinations, like that. Just laying down pieces like this. And water can get, it can get carried, you can get lost in it real quick. <laughs> so you want to keep everything really quiet and don't get really precious with it too soon. You know, let your brushwork just play. I have some rocks down here that I started laying in. And to do those um, rocks to make them look like they are under the surface, you just take a little bit of ochre, whatever this tone is, just do it a little bit lighter. So I take some ochre, maybe a teeny bit of white, just to cool it down like that. Okay, and then I keep it really simple. Just lay down a piece of paint like that. Okay, another. we'll do another one over here. Let's do it bigger. Curve it a little. Okay, that is gonna have a shadow. I put a shadow underneath it. No water. So I am gonna see if I can zoom this in a little bit. This down. You don't need to see my face. Let's get this closer. There. Hopefully you can see better. Okay. All right, so let's try that. Is that helping? Okay. <laughs> we'll get real personal here. All right. Okay, so I'm giving these shadows, these rocks, a little bit of a shadow under here. And, um... You won't be able to see my palette much, but that's okay. The colors, I'll just tell you what I'm using. And in this case, it's just ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to give that a shadow. And then um, when I get a little further, I'll take some of the white and kind of trickle it around there and it'll look like water flowing around these rocks. This part right in here where the shore is coming down to the water, I personally don't like because the value here is too light and that's driving me nuts, but um, I'll fix it later. I can't just, I can't jump in and fix everything that bugs me at the same time, but <laughs> just so you know, I'm not going to leave it like that. I know on YouTube we don't um, get to see the kind of a lot of the finished paintings because it's not like Facebook where you can show the pictures, but um, I, I will try to. I, I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so that is looking better. I, I kind of like where that's going. Again, 
was thinking about too as the water comes around this way. I had some purple chunks of paint in here, which uh, they're pretty, but they're kind of distracting. So I may use them a little bit, but uh, not as much as I had them. Okay, so right now I'm feeling a little bit more of this movement, and I think I will lighten this passage back in here a little bit as it comes around behind the horse and the rider. Back this way. This is a little lighter. I will be adding a darker bank to this so that it's, it shows more of that separation. Picking up some of that um, light in there. Maybe from the mountain, whatever. Keeping my brushwork not very fussy. I want it to just be simple, little clean pieces of paint. I never, I never want to do this scratchy, scratchy, you know, like this. Um, so I'll just keep it really soft. And I'm gonna pure that up a little bit more. Just what I mean is clean ultramarine blue and white. There's probably a little bit of that umber on my brush, or excuse me, burnt sienna, but that's okay. Just a little isn't gonna make or break this. So just kind of dabity dab dab dabbing. Dab dab dab. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I think as the water comes closer to us, uh, like with anything, as it gets closer, it's richer. Richer color, richer brushwork, warmer tones. Um, so, that being the case, I'm gonna make my sky here, as it would show up, a little bit more brilliant blue. Like that, yeah, that's pretty. And the biggest mistake people often make with water is they paint it blue. <laughs> uh, water is only reflective it's that it's not a natural color uh, so make sure that you pay special close attention to whatever you're seeing bounced in there I'm trying really hard to match what I had in my original study here because those colors were as authentic as I could get them while I was there all right, so I remember that there was a little a bit of alizarin crimson in that water. So I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and yellow ochre and come up with this warm um, mixture like this. Just adds a little bit uh, another dimension of beautiful color. Looks pretty, pretty, pretty. Adding a little ultramarine blue to that, it kind of makes it a little more violet. It's just dark. It's a really pretty dark tone. You can add a little white to it too to see it, to brighten it up just a little. I'm cleaning that. Okay. So I definitely don't want to overwork it because you can and because it's so much fun. So I'm going to keep it really simple and kind of just step away from that for a little bit. I'm going to put in the bank over here now while I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because I can see it here, and it was just a really simple, dark passage. And I'm going to let some of that brushwork go up into the woods over here. It helps lead the eye in a little bit. I was thinking about putting, um, this guy has a border collie dog, and I was thinking about putting him in there, but um, I, I don't know if I'm going to or not, or not, because it... On one hand, I love it, and every cowboy has a border collie <laughs> or some dog, but um, I'm thinking that it might be a little distracting to the story because the story really is about these guys, the, the guy, the little calf and the horse. They're all on this alert looking into the woods because that bear is waking up. And I thought that the addition of the dog would um, uh, distract from that, so I may just not do that. I have to think about it. Okay, adding the bank back here. Now, um, I don't want to make the bank over here as dark as the bank here because it's further away and everything as it goes farther away is lighter and lighter and lighter. So to create that illusion, gotta always just keep it in mind. And my brushwork gets smaller, it's less uh, noticeable. And I want the horse walking in a little bit of the creek because I thought that that would be neat, like sort of interacting with the water. 
and I'll give him a shadow here. It seems like he'd have a shadow this way, maybe a little bit. Let's make that shadow a little bit purple. So I'm taking a little ultramarine blue, a lizard crimson, white. That looks nice. I think that's a good shadow. Let's see what happens. I think that looks all right. All right, just subtle. I can go back over that with um, some of the things that I have got the white and this um, creamy color in there. But again, it, it, it everything helps to point us in the direction of the bear over here. So that is my thoughts with that. Okay, so I'm happy there. Now I'm going to add some of the highlights in the water because I think it's ready for that. I'm gonna get, and I, I buy these really fancy brushes. <laughs> This is the Walmart variety, $5 a pack for a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so I'm going in. I like it because I, it's really little and I can just do this, get a little, little bit. And let's see, where do we want this? Let's just add a few highlights right in like that. Little bits. These are directional. You don't want to overdo these. But, um, and I hope that you can see, yeah, you can see those. So I'm going to make sure that around the horse there's some cool little splashes and things going on where he's walking. Not too much. I don't want to go. I think that that kind of wouldn't look, you know, uh, might look hokey. <laughs> So I will do a few little sparkles in there. And let's get some along the shore here. I'm gonna use some oil because the oil makes my white mixture a little runnier. And right now I just want some clean little lines. Like that. Uh, this is another one of my fancy Walmart varieties. Yeah, a little tiny, teeny tiny liner. Got some mega inky soupy mixture like this. And with this, I can just go in and do some little squiggles like that. I used this brush to draw in the, the drawing of the cowboy in here. He's super tiny, so I needed a tiny brush, but I make an inky mixture of the turpentine and I just go in and, um, you know, just drawing it in place. Let's get some brighter. We're gonna hit this up with some white. Just pure white. Go ding 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 ding. Ding 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 ding. That looks cool. We'll get it around here. This is a another one of those things. Um, and I talk about it once in a while. If it looks pretty and you're having a lot of fun, you have a tendency to put it in a whole bunch. But you gotta be careful, because you can overdo it. <laughs> it's that. Oh, this is fun! Pace yourself, do a little bit, see how that looks. You might uh, find that that's all you need. I'm gonna go around this rock a little bit. Hope you can see that. And over here. Kind of paint that to look like it's water's rushing around there. Now I will go back through here and do a little bit more um, sparkles because it's I know it's hard to watch when you're at home and you're it's hard to see because the screen's already little. Um, so let's get into some of this foliage up here. I think that that'd be fun. So this is it's not that I'm done with the creek, but that kind of gives you an idea of how that I would handle that passage. So I'm gonna get go back to my size four flat and. Where's my plenier study of these trees? I think that this is gonna be fun. Let's do this. Here we go. I'm not worried about the bear yet because my plan is to kind of go around him. I'll put this right here. I'm gonna go around him and then I'll pop out a few highlights. I really want him really subtle, so I don't want it to be calling a whole bunch of attention. All right, so this tree. Grabbing some oil, jumping into 
I'm working from the background forward just like I did with the creek, keeping all of my brushwork uh, subtle, showing that what's underneath oops, the sparkles of these pulling out um, from the back. I hope that makes sense. I like the, this green. I did a like a layer of dark going to green, going to sort of a muted green to golden yellow and then to brighter yellow as it moved towards the light. But I wanted to come back in here and give these trees a little bit more definition. Just some of these uh, leaf clumps referring to my study because I remembered in the study that I had more of this warmer golden tone than what I had showing up over here. And I really want to create this um, hazy golden camouflage layer down here for the bear. Flicking, clumping. I know it's just a kind of a monotone color here that I'm doing, but I will add color over the top of it. Let's get some up here. Over here. Um, I guess I can do some of it over here since I have it on my brush. I really liked how the contrast of these complementary colors work together. The orangey golden um, yellow with the purpley um, blue background. Just beautiful complement colors. It's a, no surprise why so many artists go to this um, place to paint. Carson Peak. Whew. It's not it's not Howard Mountain. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered that. I was just really upset that I got it wrong. It's Carson Peak. <laughs> and the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Whew. Now I can sleep at night. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop there for a second and go in and paint some of the tree trunks. Wow. I jumped, did everybody jump out of their skin there for a moment? Okay, getting these tree trunks in here, painting that, um, it was ultramarine blue. I start with the base of ultramarine blue and white. That gives me just a nice light blue. But I'm gonna add into that some yellow ochre. Carson Peak, that is so beautiful too. And we were out there in this workshop early in the morning and the sun was just hitting it like this and oh my gosh it was like pristine heaven um, it was a great workshop put on by um, Frank Serrano excellent teacher good person too all right so I'm gonna put in some of these tree trunks like this I will come back through here and add in some of the white of that birch Going over some of these uh, leaf clumps too. Using this color in here that I see, as I go down the trunk, I'm gonna start moving my brushwork across the tree trunk like this, because I think it looks like a, a more attractive brushstroke. So we're just um, getting a little bit bigger mixture here because I ran out. I hate that when that happens. Okay. Um, allowing the brushstroke to show form really important going across the tree trunk and I'll just I'll add a little bit of this or that as I go down the trunk because I think it it breaks it up and it makes it more interesting to add a little variety to this mixture if I just did gray going from top to bottom it would not be visually interesting so um, mixing that up and then as it moved out moves down the trunk uh, aspens poplars, a lot of these trees get darker towards the base. So I am going to not miss my opportunity for that beautiful movement of light as it goes down like that. And down, down, down. And that darker tone is more of just the ultramarine blue burnt sienna mixture. Yeah, I like that. And this is going to contrast nicely with a lighter background that I put behind these trees. Okay, I like that. 
it's okay to like your own work too. I always say that. Make sure you like what you're doing. It's important. It's not, it's not pride to say, hey, I really like this. This is fun. Because if it wasn't fun, why do it? You know? Enjoy it. It's not that you think every painting is a masterpiece. I don't think every, I mean, I, every painting is a new and epic struggle. It should be. Um, if you're not challenging yourself, you need to find out what you need to do to challenge yourself with every painting. Otherwise you grow stale. Um, I think I'm lousy at painting flowers, so I'm gonna start um, figuring out how to handle flowers a little bit better because they're such a challenge. So you might be seeing some videos. <laughs> Just kidding. I won't plague you with flower videos. <laughs> All right, so this is obviously not the highlight that I'm working on because it's kind of dull and muted. Um, but I will go into that with brighter passages. Right now, just laying down kind of the bones of the tree. Or Actually, I already had the bones down. This is building up more of the muscle around that. That makes sense. And I'm looking at some of those in there, how I did that. And I've mixed it up. Some of these are darker, some are lighter. Um, and now there's a shadow side the shadow on these birch trees kind of goes down the middle because of the paper texture of the tree. It picks up a lot of bounce light. So the shadow is mostly right down the middle. And I kind of have that on there. So I am going to go like this. And you'll see when I put in a bounce light. Birch trees are so fun to paint. They are really a study in and of themselves. I, I keep saying birch. Poplar, birch, aspen, whatever you want to call them. Um, those paper trunks are unique and I really enjoy that. Figuring things out like that. Trees are some of my most favorite things to paint because they are always, always different and they have a unique personality. Um, you could spend a lifetime studying trees and how they um, adjust to their environment and how they grow. Oh my gosh, I'm turning into Bob Ross. These are happy little trees. <laughs> happy, happy little trees. I'll just give them a little friend right here. All right, um, okay, so let's get some of those highlights in here. So I'm grabbing some white and let's put a little bit of white and yellow, cad yellow. Um, some yellow ochre. All right, I don't wanna go right down the side of the tree. So even in here, you can see I kind of broke up that those different highlights, so I'm gonna do that over here too. I like the idea of the light hitting strong right here. And I just turned over my brush because it was picking up some of that tone underneath. So wiping it off, grabbing some more. Let's hit that right there. And see how to do that. Just a little bit of a zing, zing, zing. I'm gonna pull the camera in closer so that you can see some of the these detaily things that I'm doing. How's that? Okay. All right. Let's get this one. Let's switch this up. This one's gonna be hit with highlight right here. Can you see? Yep. Yeah, good. Okay. Like this. Let's get this guy up here. Someday I will have a better camera for doing these videos. Um, I like that there. That's kind of neat how that goes down. And then I, every now and then I just take and I go with my brush. Like, let's do it here. Yeah, that looks like a birch. That looks like paper. Let's do. Oh, that's fun. Okay, um, let's get some more over here. All right, and down here. 
I'm actually going to take this painting with me to Montana. I'm going to leave next week. I'm flying to Montana to do a demo at my gallery in Whitefish. And I'm going to finish this painting up there. And um, I think that'd be kind of neat. I'll do some videos so you'll get some videos from Glacier National Park. Woohoo! I won't be able to go live from Glacier National Park. I'm sure that there's no Wi-Fi, but I will make some um, just regular videos and do some cool plein air paintings there. So here I'm just kind of breaking up. One thing I, I, I just can't stand seeing on a painting is, is um, this, this brushwork where you can see and it's just this repetition. Oh, I, I don't know why I did that. And it just goes... Boom, 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 for the bushes, you know? And so if I have that appearance on here, I'm gonna go back through and adjust my brushwork to just change some of that. I don't want that looking amateurish. <laughs> okay, so I like how that is just kind of moving, the light's moving down the trunk. That looks neat. Um, now I'm gonna do some of the bounced light coming in from the back. And I'm not holding my palette because I'm holding you closer. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking ultramarine blue and white, and I will go on this side of the tree and working my brush into a, a chisel like that. I'm gonna go like this. Well, let's get some paint on there. And yeah, that's better. Like that, that is pretty. Trying to keep this tree a little bit more angular because it can get too noodly, and I don't want a noodly tree. <laughs> Same thing with this tree. Let's get some bounce light in here. That looks good. Um, yeah, okay, getting ahead of myself. Slow down. Okay, so that looks fine up there. And I'm going to go back to my um, ultra fancy Walmart brush, this bad boy, and I'm picking up some dark ultramarine blue burnt sienna. I'm going to put in some of those um, little knotted tree, the, the little, what are those called, eyes on a birch tree? Oh, if you make them too dark, they can look too thingy, so uh, by thingy, I mean like that one thing that draws you in and that's the only thing you look at. If you keep it a little bit more subtle, it won't draw you so much and it becomes less of a thing. So we don't want it to be thingy. And these are another thing that, oh, that's so fun. It starts to look like a birch tree that you can get really carried away. So be very careful that you don't do too many. Just keep it really subtle. Um, as it goes down to the bottom, the base of the trunk has more, so we can get a little bit more, um, have a little more fun down here. I wanna kinda give it a little texture and do that get this one too. It's kind of like a, it looks like an eye. And um, so we're just gonna, I kind of do this curve that, and then there's like a little, like an eye, like a curve and dot. Okay, I think that that's fine enough for that one. I'm gonna do a little bit of bounced light from the grass up into the tree. Because it is birch and it's paper, it's picking up the reflections. So we've got this light that's hitting it down here on both of these. Okay, I think that that's as far as I'm going to take this demo today. I hope that it's been helpful and that you've enjoyed this. Um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed this. And you know what? I'm going to share this painting um, I think I can share it like as a post on my YouTube. So if you want to see the finished painting, check back 
uh, in a couple weeks um, and I will share the finished product. Thank you guys so much for joining and I hope you have a wonderful week. All right, bye-bye guys.